Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition, our Let's Play series against XTRG, which we're playing in a play-by-email game. Uh, we are conducting the J January 18th, 1942 turn. We'll be moving into the orders phase for 19 or January 19th. And uh, we're dealing with a Japanese offensive in the southern reaches of the Pacific Ocean, uh, while also attempting to hang on to the Dutch East Indies as long as we can. Uh, looks like a cargo ship here off the coast of Java is being torpedoed, and uh, she's going to go down and sink. Um, we've got our own submarine firing at Japanese cargo ships here near Truk, uh, apparently to no avail. Uh, the Mark 14 sucks. We also have our ship being depth charged. We're going to fast forward through that. No damage done to that. And uh, our porpoise here off the coast of New Guinea firing torpedoes at another Japanese merchant ship, the Toba Maru. Hit it, but no actual damage done. The torpedo was a dud because the Mark 14 sucks. And that looks like it. that's it for the night phase. Uh, some temporary flotation issues on a tanker somewhere. More torpedoes firing and hitting Japanese ships, the Kiyashu Maru, off the coast of uh, New Caledonia. And uh, some flotation issues on a submarine of ours. Okay. Japanese are loading or unloading more troops sort of at Lafoa, which is at the southern tip of the island of New Caledonia. In our last episode, we did lose the uh, city of Comac on the northern coast of New Caledonia, and now the Japanese are moving very rapidly down the uh, tip of the island of New Caledonia. They'll probably be in uh, Nomaya, which is the capital and sort of the southern point of the island where we have the bulk of our forces in the next three days or so, I would guess. And uh, when they do arrive, they'll probably reduce the, the fortifications and the troops there in probably two days. So I would guess we're going to hang on to that position anywhere from five to six more days uh, into the final week or so of January 42. Losing New Caledonia is going to be a big blow to us. Uh, it's going to be something that's going to be tough to overcome, but it's not a game changer, really. It's not going to draw my carriers out. It's not going to uh, cut off Australia or anything like that. Um, we can manage. Okay, so more depth charging of our sub there, which continues to fire torpedoes that are doing nothing. Some anti-submarine action off the coast of Korea. The Polak is firing some torpedoes at a AG here to the east of Truk. No damage done. The Thresher firing torpedoes and hitting uh, a cargo ship north of Sapporo. Again, no damage. These Mark Ford, <laughs> these Mark 14s are like I thought it was a 70% dud rate. We should have a hit by now. I mean, they were bad. But, like, we should still have a hit by now. The permit firing some torpedoes at a destroyer and doing nothing. Uh, and we're moving into the air phase. Okay, so some recon off of Fiji, some recon near Bataan, uh, Boswanga. Fast forwarding through just sort of the basic recon phase. Bombing of some of our troops here in China see what happens here in the air phase. I don't... I'm hoping there's nothing large that occurs. Looks like some Japanese Zeros and Kates are attacking Bataan. They're uh, bombing our minesweepers in the port of Bataan. They're gonna sink them with relative ease. Fortunately, it looks like he's withdrawing those light carriers north somewhere, so um, I have another cargo ship that I'm going to try and sneak into Bataan. If he keeps his, his aircraft around here, then it's it's going to be a goner. But I'd like to try and sneak another 1,700 supplies into Bataan if I can and uh, lengthen the time that we can hold the base. Okay. Zeros and Kates. Again, they're going to be bombing more minesweepers. This time they don't do any damage. Or at least I didn't see any hits there. The Polak is firing. Oh, we got a hit. <laughs> we got a hit against the Daruka Maru. We also, it looks like we're using our, our deck gun against it as well. So one torpedo hit, one shell hit. And you can hear the sound of waves means that the ship is sinking. So it looks like we did get one cargo ship with our submarines this turn. 
That's a lot of soldiers being lost near Lafoa. My guess is they're, uh, they've got a considerable force there. We did see a division land at Rabaul last turn. So uh, that's going to be problematic, to say the least. So maybe he's even deploying two divisions, one at uh, New Caledonia and one at Rabaul. If he really is, I mean, he's pulling some pretty heavy forces out of somewhere. Bombardment attack at Wankow. That's not really going to change anything there. Shock attack at Rabaul. He's going to overwhelm the defenses there. Interesting. So he did shock attack. He did reduce the fortifications, but he didn't actually take the base. He did destroy several of our combat squads, but we actually got in a, a couple of licks ourselves, destroying one engineer squad, two infantry squads, and three vehicles. Uh, so we lost 439 men. The, fo the force at Rabaul is giving a better account of itself than I thought, and oh, here we go. A major Japanese effort here on the island of Kaiga, or at the base of Kaigayan, on the uh, island of Mindanao here, the southern large island of the Philippines. We've got three SNLF forces and a Japanese infantry regiment attacking the Filipino forces here at the base, uh, which consists of two infantry regiments, three infantry battalions, and an infantry division. Uh, and it looks like that defensive went really well for us. The Japanese got a 1-4 to four assault odds, so the fort level of 2 held. They didn't reduce the fortification, and all right. We inflicted 200, or sorry, 2,315 casualties, 87 infantry squads destroyed, 2 non-combatant squads destroyed, 18 guns lost, 12 of those destroyed. We only lost 122 men. We don't have a ton of supply at the uh, base of Kaigun, but uh, the Japanese were repulsed uh, with effort. Uh, and with uh, with uh, pretty good effect. So Defender got terrain modification and leader's modification, uh, Not prep no preparation bonus, actually a preparation penalty and morale penalty. Japanese had no bonuses or penalties. So uh, that battle went very well for us. And then a shock attack at Lafoa. So we can actually see he doesn't have a division here, but he does have four artillery units, a tank regiment, and, an inf and two infantry regiments, along with two guards units. So that's, you know, when he gets everything in place, that's going to be a pretty strong force arrayed against us. About 406 assault value. That's already almost double what we have at Nomaya. Granted, we do have a little bit of fortification at Nomaya, but we don't have a ton of supply. So uh, New Caledonia is going to fall. And if it goes the way that Comac did, it may fall on the first attack. Uh, but overall, it looks like that's going to do it for the combat uh, phase. A uh, bit of a slow turn, a really big battle at Kaigun that went really well for us, and uh, a scrappy little force just delaying the Japanese a day at Rabaul, but uh, I'm happy with that delay. 400 casualties on a Japanese infantry division is nothing to scoff at from such an inferior force. So that's a good result for us. We'll jump into our turn. I don't know if I'm going to have a lot of orders or not. This may be a pretty quiet turn, and we may be done pretty quickly, but we'll see. I'll jump in, and we'll, we'll take a look here in just a moment. All right, everybody. Uh, not a ton of uh, big developments to talk about. The biggest one is the Japanese seem to be going for the city of Changsha, which is absolutely the key city in the defense of southern China. Uh, it's on the other side of the river, so they don't actually have to attack across a river to attack it. Uh, and it is a little bit under strength at the moment. We've only got 2,200 uh, assault value here. He's bringing 14 units to bear against it, and it looks like he's concentrating even more against it. So it seems to be the, the focal point of all of his advances here in sort of south-central China. Now, the one thing that's working for us is this is an urban hex. So if we go over here and we take a look, urban gives us a times four defensive value. Additionally, we have upgraded the forts from level three to level four. We're working on level five forts, but that seems unlikely that we'll get there. So we've got level four forts and we've got level four defensive bonus for it being in a city so that should help us in the event of an attack but again if he's bringing like six or seven thousand assault value against it i don't know how much that's going to help us we do have an additional seven to eight or i guess around let's see five six hundred assault values on the way from the adjacent hex at Sia uh, siangatan 
Um, I'm also bringing in a few additional reserves into Sayangatan to make sure that he doesn't just go around and flank us like he has in the north. He does have one unit to the south here, so I don't think he's going to flank us from that direction. Um, because if he does, he, I don't think he'll have the strength to do it. Additionally, if he attacks either of these cities, he'd have to cross a river. So he'd have to really go on a wide flanking march to try and get around our position here. Um, additionally, I am railing in some reinforce from, reinforcements from Kwailin and also from Tuyun. Um, and that should get there in some time. We also have uh, about 1,200 assault value, which are in the process of retreating uh, to Henyang, uh, they're about to cross a river down here in the southern province. I'm assuming they're going to get here next turn, and then they'll be about four hexes away. But that, that's probably too far away to make a difference at the moment. Uh, but it is an interesting idea to maybe move them into Pinsian and then have them try and attack into the flank of the Japanese advance on Changsha. Again, this could be a diversion, and maybe they'll sweep at one of these southern cities. But I do have interior lines, uh, so that should help. Uh, Changsha is, again, the most defensible position in southern China, uh, but it is also a bit of a risky situation where uh, if he brings overwhelming force, he might well destroy one of our main armies. Nothing else really going in, in the Chinese theater this turn, at least nothing that's any different than previous turns. Uh, not a lot to report in Singapore. He's advanced to the hex north of Johar Baru with one unit, probably an armored unit that's moving rapidly, um, but um, that's that's that. In the South Pacific, the, China, the Japanese have moved the carriers to the northeast of New Caledonia. They appear to be heading east. Uh, I don't know if it's northeast or east, but maybe to Espiritu Santo, uh, to refuel or rearm or maybe to Fiji uh, to try and knock our uh, knock our forces around a bit. Not sure one or the other. Um, the Japanese have taken Lefoy. They've got over 12,000 troops ashore. Our troops in Nomaya have sufficient supplies for the moment, but not for a long-term siege. We only have about 172 assault value there. Most of the troops here, I believe, are actually militias. Uh, units. Uh, we've got one infantry section here as part of the 39th Australian Infantry Battalion. Um, we've got some uh, light AA that should help against any air attacks. We've got a coastal battery that'll help against any landing that he may bring against us. But the bulk of our troops are militia. So these guys will probably fold just like the troops at Comac did after a single attack, which means I'm, I'm probably assuming four or five days till this falls. Um, not much I can do about that. We are unloading a large amount of fuel here in New Zealand in an effort to kind of make sure that that island is adequately supplied. Uh, so we are bringing in quite a bit of fuel down here at Auckland. We're up to 40,000 in the port with an additional 28,000 and 11,000, so another 39,000 that's unloading. Uh, additionally, the tanker that had about 20,000 has reached uh, Church Christ Church here on the southern island of New Zealand and has unloaded about 3,000 fuel there. Uh, to make sure that the industry on the southern portion of the island is kept supplied. Uh, over by Perth, we've got some, you know, different convoys moving around. Uh, about 23,000 fuel is on two tanker convoys in the port. This transport convoy is going to disband for now. Um, and that brings our total fuel in the port to about 68,000, uh, plus, you know, the 20,000 that's unloading, another 6,000 on the way tomorrow. Uh, and then we've got 16,000 here, uh, 8,000 oil here, 21,000 there, uh, and another 17,000 coming down from here. So quite a bit more fuel is on the way, 25,000 over here coming from Oosthaven. Uh, so that's encouraging to see. And then we've got another task force that's almost completely loaded up at Oosthaven, uh, about 24, it's going to be 28,000 fuel on board these four tankers, which will be coming south uh, shortly as well. Oosthaven's down to 29,000 fuel. Palembang is at 42,000 fuel. I didn't turn my refineries back on here, did I? Nope, production's halted at the oil refinery. So we continue building up that massive oil stockpile, but not uh, a massive uh, oil, uh, or not a massive fuel stockpile, which is fine. Um... The one tanker at Surabaya is repairing. These other guys are loading some supply. Yeah, so once this task force uh, leaves Surabaya, or sorry, leaves Oosthaven uh, with its 28,000 fuel, probably next turn, then I'm going to go ahead and use the other tankers, which are currently in port at Oosthaven, waiting for port facilities to open up uh, to load up an additional 
uh, oh wow, the Trinity can carry 9,000 fuel. So we can load up uh, probably about another 20,000 fuel uh, on board the ships that are already here uh, with some adequate escorts and bring them south to Australia as well. Uh, this tanker is trying to retreat back to Cape Town, but she's pretty badly battered. Well, hopefully she makes it. She's only making five knots right now. But she's probably to the west of any Japanese actual shipping. Uh, meanwhile, we've got some uh, corvettes coming south. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, ship movement in the Indian Ocean in the Bay of Bengal. Uh, we also have issued orders to our carrier group here that's coming out of Aden, which is on its way to Colombo. Uh, the carrier Indomitable and the Battleship Royal Sovereign. I'm not sending them with any escorts. I'm just assuming that the Japanese don't have any submarines or threats in this area. That may be a dangerous assumption, but frankly, I don't have any escorts to send with them at the moment. So it's just going to have to be what it is. Um, several other convoys moving around. We've got some tankers moving to Perth from uh, the Middle East. 20,000 fuel on board this tanker on the way. Not a super efficient route, but it is what it is. Uh, and then we are also unloading fuel at Karachi, trying to pump as much fuel into India as possible so it can generate all the supply it needs. India has enough industry to really provide its own supply. Not Burma, because it's not linked with Burma via rail or road, but uh, India itself, anyway, has quite a lot of uh, capacity for um, s being self-sufficient from a supply perspective. Uh, not a lot of other changes there or in Australia, really. Um, our carriers continue to repair and replenish themselves at Pearl after a long and arduous uh, carrier raid to the west. So you can see here we've got all four carriers at Pearl Harbor. They're almost done refitting. We're going to give one more day for the Lexington to uh, get back up to 100%, and then we'll have four carriers at 100% ready to do whatever we deem them uh, needing to do. I think the only other thing maybe worth looking at as some of these air wings are a little bit uh, under strength is these buffaloes here. I don't have enough wildcats to upgrade them uh, yet, but I am a little bit uneasy sending a carrier into action with buffaloes. Uh, one more day won't get them enough to equip the... Uh... Can we upgrade now? We can't upgrade now. So we just lost 12 aircraft because we upgrade, we force upgraded these guys to the Wildcat uh, and used up the entire supply of aircraft in the pool. We sent back the Buffaloes into the pool, and um, now we've got... Uh, they haven't arrived quite yet. Uh, but we've got 15 Wildcats on board the uh, Lexington, and as we build more, we'll be able to draw replacements. It does lower our fighter strength, but it gives us a much more capable fighter. The Buffalo is just kind of pathetic. Uh, so we've got uh, essentially 15 Wildcats on the, um, what is that, the Lexington, or was it the, yeah, 15 Wildcats on the Lexington, 27 on the Saratoga, so that's 42. Um, that brings us to 61 if we count the Yorktown's uh, Wildcats, and then the uh, Enterprise brings us to 88 fighters uh, off our four carriers, all told. Not a very strong force, but not super weak either. Uh, we've got some submarines here moving west over in this direction. We've got some tankers moving uh, to Christmas Island and other locations in the Pacific. Uh, we've got some logistical convoys that are en route. Uh, I already mentioned the convoy that's at Australia. We've got these uh, troop transports taking a huge wide berth on their way to the American West Coast. Um, and then Pago Pago still remains a hub of our uh, surface forces in the South Pacific. Uh, you can see here we're unloading some 18,000 fuel, although they can't actually get to the docks, so they're taking forever to do it. But they are unloading some fuel, so we'll have about 20,000, 30,000 fuel or so uh, on the island uh, once uh, some of these ships unload. Um, I don't want them to undock transports. There's really no reason to have these guys here. This uh, troop transport's probably fast enough to keep it relatively safe. Uh, I want them to be San Diego. Home base cannot be set using direct routing. Okay. Normal. All right, so we'll send this back to San Diego. I'm not going to send it at full speed. I'm also not going to send it direct. 
that would get us the highest likelihood of running into Japanese subs. So we'll take a little bit of a, a longer route, but uh, best case scenario is it, it'll help avoid the risk of running into Japanese submarines till the very end of the route, and we can just sprint it into port at that point. So we're going to go ahead and pull this guy away from Pago Pago, that transport. Uh, actually, let's do that with, we've got the Monterey, and we've also got the Metasona. So let's uh, bring both of those APs in that way. Um, okay, so we'll bring both these in. They can both make 22 knots. They're both ocean liners. Uh, so we'll do that. Large number of tankers here. I'd really like to get them out of port before any Japanese show up. Let's bring at least one destroyer along for the ride. So one destroyer, two troop transports on their way back. They'll be leaving this turn. Cargo ship. This guy's slower, but I'm still going to send him back to the to the home islands. But I am going to or the home islands back to the west coast. Uh, but I am going to send him alone mainly because whoops, mainly because I don't want. Uh, him slowing down the ocean liners, and so we'll send them on a slightly different route. Oh wait, he's not heading home to San Diego yet. All right, use waypoints. Okay, and we're also going to make sure not to send him at flank speed either, because that ship won't arrive back at full speed. All right, so we're going to pull this cargo task force out, this transport task force out. Uh, the tanker task force will pull as soon as we can. They're still unloading fuel. Uh, the support task force is going to go into port. 37 systems damage, get it out of the way. And that's about that for Pago Pago. Um, I don't have a lot else to say at this point, guys. I, I mean, I'll be honest. Uh, kind of a quiet turn. The force at Bataan has used a little bit of its supply. It's at 51,000 supply left. We are loading up supply here down at Tarkin, which is kind of out of the Japanese eye. We're up to 600 supply on this uh, transport. There's another 600 in the port. It does have a refinery as well. So it does turn oil to fuel and fuel to supply. So as we kind of load that up, hopefully we get it closer to around 1,000, and then we'll send it in to try and get more supply into Bataan. Additionally, we are loading up the 300 or so supply into the Zeman uh, at Buswanga. Uh, there's 330 supply. I'd like to pull all of that supply into Bataan. Uh, we've used about 3,000 supply in the last couple of turns, so I really want to try and get more supply into Bataan uh, ASAP so that we can... Uh, again, my goal is if he's not going to press me in Patan, I should keep a force in being as long as possible. And uh, if I could, you know, keep sneaking small amounts of supply in there to keep those troops supplied into February and into, into March, that would be amazing. Meanwhile, the battle down here at Kaigan was fought. Our troops are actually still in pretty good shape. They uh, still have 274 assault value. They held their position pretty well. They are a bit tired at 25 fatigue, but the disruption is low on pretty much all of these units here. Fatigue moderately high, but I'm assuming the fatigue is actually higher on his units than it is on ours. The one problem is that battle did chew up a lot of supply. We've only got 1,600 supply left. All of our units currently have adequate supplies. You can tell because it's all uh, white, which means that they have the supplies they've requested. But they need 1,800 to resupply completely, so if like another battle was fought. 1,800 supplies, the supply amount required, and there's only 1,668 in the in the base. So despite the valiant defense at Kaigan, we'll probably lose this position inside a week. Uh, if the Japanese attack again, they'll probably get routed even worse. But if the Japanese just kind of sit back and wait for five or six days as we chew through some of our supply, my assumption is this base will fall in anywhere from seven to ten days, so that by the end of January, the only major position we'll have left in the Philippines is up north at Bataan. Um, additionally, do we have anything else we can move around? Not really. We're still bringing the hurricanes up to, uh, up to snuff. They're still resting and refitting, uh, trying to bring the aircraft at Jim Dinjabi, uh, up to strength as well. Um, they're, uh, currently repairing some damaged airframes there. The troops in the south, the load stars are, are fine. The fortresses are still repairing. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have a lot. Show unit OB. The rest are at Swing King. 
Swing Kong, whatever it is. So I guess I'll move them there just to link up with the rest of the unit. Just the lone unit to get a little bit of... Uh, wait a minute. Are they not there? 102 Detachment. Can we cause them to rejoin? No, I guess they're their own unit. Uh, in any event, that lowers the aviation support required at Palembang by one. We're exactly double the minimum aviation support. We've actually just got way more aircraft in uh, the Dutch East Indies than we have um, than we have support for. Where can I bring these guys? How far can I fly these guys? Can we get them to Sorba? Yeah. Trying to skip these torpedo bombers south and get them to Australia. Maybe we can get them onto some of these South uh, Pacific islands and, and do a bit of havoc uh, where we've got some torpedoes. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to fully withdraw out of Java yet, but I really can't hit anything at Batavia. So we will pull them back a little bit more. There's nothing at Batavia to hit, I guess is my point. Are these swordfish over here? No. Where are the swordfish? Vildebeests are here. Swordfish are somewhere. Where did I put the swordfish? I don't even know. I guess we could try and move them to uh, Balak Poppin. We actually have, I forgot about the fact that we've got like 30 fighters at this base. We're going to stand everybody down to help get them back up to supply. Their uh, aviation support's also a problem there. But um, I, w I could get those back into Singapore. The aviation situation in Singapore is pretty good. All of our fighters are at 100% readiness um, based on, you know, the number of airframes that they have. We've got 10, 19, 25 P-40 Warhawks and 40 Buffaloes. Um, no reserves in the pools. And I think for this P-40 E group here, do we want to upgrade them to Air Cobras? No upgrade possible. Pool number's insufficient upgrade is off. Do we have to wait till they get to 25? Is it due to their remoteness, maybe? Do we have any fighter units there that aren't 25? Nope. What about the Buffalo groups? Do they have any aircraft we can upgrade them to? We do have some Hurricanes that are coming online. Hurricane B tropes. But I don't know if I really want to, like... Again, it, does, it looks like there's some limitations in me upgrading some of these frontline units. So we'll save the airframes for now. Um, we've got 11 of them there. We could try these buffaloes back here, I think. The 18 here, could we, would we be able to upgrade them? Oh, for whatever reason, this squadron must be a different nationality. It doesn't have access to those hurricanes. Interesting. Well, it would have been nice to have 18 more buffaloes that we could have used as reinforcements in uh, Australia, but I guess, or in uh, Singapore, but I guess that won't work. Interesting. Yeah, they must be Australian. They are. In any event. Um, okay, so that's kind of the situation right now. Um, we've got a lot of stuff in movement, but not a lot going on this turn. So uh, one other thing, we do have our submarines chasing this task force west as it tries to make it to truck. The Pollock, which fired six of its torpedoes and did basically no damage. We've got the Narwhal, we've got the Grayling, and we've got the Nautilus. They're all racing back to establish another submarine line between truck and this task force to see if we can do some more damage. Additionally... Uh, these guys are headed south uh, toward Rabaul uh, in an effort to... Actually, they're not headed south. They're just kind of chilling there. So let's get them down toward Rabaul in order to engage enemy shipping. And I don't actually see any enemy shipping at the moment. We've got our two cruisers that are coming along here. Uh, they don't appear to be detected. They are in heavy cloud cover. 
Um, but I, I don't see anything yet. Um, I wonder if it makes more sense to send these guys toward Misu Island. That's kind of an interdiction route. I mean, he had a bunch of heavy cruisers bombarding Rabaul. So I'm a little uneasy to, like, send light cruisers in there knowing they're going to die. But if there is some kind of, like, replenishment convoy or something, I wouldn't mind inter intercepting something like that, kind of like a rear echelon cruiser unit or something. Um, so we'll do that. I don't want to go directly to Rabaul. So we'll we'll stay a little bit. I don't want them so close to truck, though, because they're definitely asking for torpedoes then. So maybe we'll set them to Misu Island and we'll limit the react to three. That should allow them to intercept uh, sort of any ships moving through the Bismarck Archipelago, uh, Archipelago region uh, without heading as far south as Rabal. So we'll see how that plays out. These are relatively valuable ships at 30 victory points, but again, it's really about making sure that XTRG knows that he needs to be guarding his rear and his supply lines and less about like whether they win the battle they might well lose the battle but again keeping him on his toes and forcing him to allocate large numbers of forces in areas that he probably considers his rear is the real objective here uh these guys are unloading fuel about thirty-five thousand left to unload at townsville okay Brisbane is 53,000, Sydney has 91,000, Melbourne has 105,000. So I think we've got sufficient fuel in Australia for the economy at the moment. Um, got a bunch of troops. I mean, I, I really want to reinforce Norfolk Island, but I don't have the cargo ships, troop transports to do it. Everything else is at Sydney. Queen Elizabeth is not what I want in the front lines anyway. What do we have here? These two are probably ideal. So let's form a transport task force out of Perth. We're going to go with the slower troop transports. They can't carry as much, but they're also not as valuable. Uh, and actually, we'll get some... Do we have any escorts? We'll get a destroyer of the Pope. And we're going to send these guys back to Sydney. So it's going to take a few days for them to get there. But once they arrive at Sydney, we'll load them up with some troops. And we'll deploy some troops to Lord Howe Island and Norfolk Island to start building a base further south than uh, New Caledonia. So that hopefully uh, they get there in time to prevent uh, you know, a further establishment of Japanese positions south because a really bad situation new caledonia sucks to lose it's a lot of victory points for the allies uh it's a it's a pretty harmful base to lose from a strategic sense but the real bases that would really hurt us is if lord howe and norfolk were both lost because those would be striking points both against new zealand and also really shut down the entire east coast of australia um, that being said, I think we'll go ahead and cut this episode off here. Um, debating landing against Savi Island as kind of an initial strike back against the Japanese may not be a terrible idea. Um, we have forces in the United States that we could start prepping for it too. So maybe we'll have the 2nd U.S. Marine Parachute Battalion, 2nd Marine Regiment, and 2nd Marine USMC Tank Battalion start preparing for that operation. Um, I think Savi is, is the place that would make more sense to go for. We could try Midway. I don't know what he has there. Midway would be a nice sub base, but I don't know if it would really get him to change his strategy or his approach. Baker Island and Canton Island wouldn't really impact much. Savi is kind of the one uh, chink in the um, armor, I would say, of the Fiji line. Obviously, New Caledonia is going to be a big one. But Savi is potentially a, a big thorn in our side from a, uh, you know, where he can base his recon units out of. And I think uh, if he's got, like, float planes on Savi, which I don't think he does right now, but if he's got float planes on Savi, that's going to be a pain in the ass. Also, I don't think he's really going to be able to resupply Savi. 
Maybe using some subs. God damn it, I can't fucking click on the base. There we go. Um, and it looks like some of our units already have some preparation for Savi, so I am going to go ahead and uh, try that. Maybe that'll be our first major amphibious operation. We'll see. The only problem is if he has the carrier, you know, the Kiryu Butai in the region, that'll be problematic to say the least. But um, And it's probably at least a month off from us doing anything there. But uh, it may be a nice base to retake and to, you know, to strike back at the Japanese. It's not a super valuable base, but um, we'll do that. And uh, maybe it'll end up being somewhere else. We'll, I guess we'll see. Anyway, guys, I think that's going to do it for this episode. We're going to go ahead and end the turn. And I'm going to send this over to XTRG, and we'll see what happens in our next turn. But until next time, guys, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm out.